My name is David Siegel, and I'm a professional heretic. In the next 10 minutes, I want to rethink the banking system for the 21st century. Year to date, all bank valuations are down about 30%. This is on top of a decade of trying to maintain their current business models while reducing expenses. As banks go digital, they have to think differently. These are the kinds of things most consultants and experts talk about. This is the kind of thing you'll read about in Chris Skinner's blog. Today, I'm going to provide a different perspective. I don't think there will be an Elon Musk of banking because fundamentally, people don't need banks. This isn't a technology problem, this is a structural problem. Banks are middlemen. The goal of digital banking is to become an app like eBay or Uber, still be a middleman, still get the fees, but reduce the humans and automate the functions. But this doesn't make sense because now we have the technology to remove the middlemen entirely. Who needs banks? Regulators need banks. We only have banks because of regulation, and regulations lead to institutions. In a completely free market, people would get innovative products and services from innovators. There would be a competitive stream of new solutions. But would those be safe? Would customers be protected? Let's find out. Let's look at the way things are today. Each year worldwide, we spend over $300 billion, with a B, $300 billion on anti-money laundering and anti-terrorist financing compliance. The result? Authorities interdict $3 billion of illegal money transferred out of $3 trillion successfully laundered year after year after year after year. The penalties are a rounding error for criminals, and we outspend them by about 100 to 1 on compliance. Almost all banks participate in this charade. The system is practically custom-built for money laundering and terrorists. It helps them look compliant and respectable while working with their bankers. Even if it worked perfectly, it would be easy to get around. The Financial Action Task Force is helping criminals and should not be allowed to continue. This is a G20 level problem, not a technology problem. In the United States, each state regulates its own banks and insurance companies. So there's a patchwork of conflicting regulations, licenses, and solutions. All of these things have failed. They help criminals. They require intermediaries. They allow access by federal agent. They, they aggregate people's data and sell it to others. Regulations let companies screw their customers. Here are fines for those who got caught, over $300 billion in the last 10 years. If you want to rip people off, get a license. You know what this is, who this is great for? Compliance people, regulators and lawyers. Big companies, startups that can raise hundreds of millions of dollars, and it's great for politicians. Politicians don't really care about keeping people safe. They care about getting reelected. They send a message to voters that they are tough on crime by passing more legislation. Legislation that pretends to fix the problem we had a couple of years ago. It looks good in a campaign speech, but it hurts more people than it helps. Making all this digital won't change a thing. So I want to outline a few important things we can do to change the environment first and let banks adapt or die. My goal here is to help customers, not banks. The first thing to realize is that money is now data. That changes everything, especially how you regulate it. We need to truly understand this before we can transform banking into something people actually want. One of the biggest things that's broken is digital identity. Banks think we should just log in, do our two-factor authentication, fill out our KYC forms, and everything's fine. But everything is not fine. Banks do everything they can to make it hard to switch to a competitor. Furthermore, millions of people have their identities stolen. Our accounts are subject to social engineering. And if you change your address, you have to spend days and days updating everything. Technologists and academics are working hard on open identity standards now and self-sovereign identity. Are banks involved in these conversations? 
Are they in a leadership position on digital identity? No, they are completely absent. Right now, banks give data about customers to government, government agencies that ask for it. This can lead to abuse, political manipulation, police interference, and the surveillance state. This is great for communism, not so good for democracy. The solution is strong cryptography with no back doors, where the customer is under full control of their data unless they give permission to use their data. Are banks advocating for this? No, they are not. Right now, banks sell and trade customer data with other vendors. Despite government regulations, they buy plenty of customer data from companies like Facebook. We should live in a world where we own our own personal data, and that includes our account information. It shouldn't be an asset that banks monetize. In many countries, citizens are not legally allowed to own their own financial assets. Today, we have technology that lets us own our own assets easily, yet we are still required to go through intermediaries like custodians and brokers. We should not require intermediaries. We should let people own their own assets. Money is data. Money isn't anywhere. People aren't anywhere anymore. They're everywhere. They're at home. They're in, they're in touch with people all over the place. To think that money is a thing we carry in our pockets or in briefcases across borders is holding innovation back. We can do everything now that we used to do just on our mobile phones. Uh, but under AML and anti-terrorist financing, the general rule is that all transactions have to be identified. Authorities have to be able to follow the money. But we've already seen that this doesn't work. Why can't we be anonymous? Why can't we shield our assets and transactions from federal authorities or anyone else? This isn't help, helping catch terrorists or drug kings. We should be able to send any amount of anything from one person to another without institutions, without borders, without federal authorities knowing anything about it. If this helps the bad guys, they're going to find a way to do it anyway. It really hurts the rest of us most. We're tokenizing fiat money in different ways now, and this is important. I believe all central banks should switch to fully digital programmable money. But the EU and G20 countries require these assets to be governed by e-money regulations and a host of ancient laws. U.S. state laws require banking licenses and surveillance. This is where all the problems are. I don't think sandboxes are the answer. I propose we rethink our entire financial system for the 21st century so we don't hold billions of people back from getting the financial services and products they deserve. I talk a lot about monetary policy because it is so important for our quality of life. Central banks cause most recessions. Most central bankers don't understand the economy. Monetary policy should be done by algorithm, not by humans. We can replace human judgment with a rule called nominal GDP level targeting, which I've explained in several videos. Professional licenses from hairstylists to doctors to real estate agents to investment advisors and brokers, they make us worse off as a society. Almost all the white collar crime in finance is committed by people with licenses. It's really just a scam to keep a certain group of people in power. We would be far better off without them, and the economy would work better. The war against gambling is like the war on drugs. It's another way for politicians to look tough while giving favors to big companies. All countries should allow unlimited gambling. That will make gambling much less interesting, and it will allow prediction markets to help all areas of human endeavor. Prediction markets can be used to improve everything from corporate governance to science to real estate to elections. Without them, we are governed by emotion rather than reasons. Markets can solve a lot of problems. And with prediction markets, we have much better data for making financial decisions about the future. I've written about how different and better insurance would be if there were no restrictions on insurance. Let the market figure out what's best. Regulations enforce 100-year-old rules that never applied in the first place and don't make the public safe. They just enforce the rent-seeking position of middlemen. 
We really could get rid of insurance companies entirely if we wanted to, and we would be better insured. Securities regulations failed a long time ago. The Howey test, which most countries use as a gold standard, is nonsense. It isn't even appropriate for 1940, let alone 2040. Securities regulators put in place many strict rules to keep the public safe, yet the average person still loses money in the markets, and the fees are built in and protected by law. Who built the giant tech companies of today? Sarbanes-Oxley. Regulation that makes it too expensive for smaller companies to seek access to public markets, so they have to get acquired by larger companies. Regulators say it would be the Wild West if they didn't exist. It's already the Wild West. Today, the average trade on the New York Stock Exchange is held for less than one second, and that trade settles in two days. Banks are intermediaries. We don't need them. We don't need MIFID and Basel and stress tests and other attempts to patch over an arcane system and make everyone feel safe. Don't believe me? Read Doug Hubbard's book, The Failure of Risk Management. That will open your eyes. We need financial products, but we don't need institutions. Let the markets find the best path forward by connecting them seamlessly, rather than with all the transmitters and intermediaries it takes to buy and sell or move assets across borders today. P2P lending, smart contracts, and other innovations have the potential to improve markets if regulators will allow them. If banks can survive in that environment, then they will be adding value to society. That's great. We should really fire most regulators and most compliance people and let prediction markets help us learn where the value is. Rather than regulations, we should have laws that require and enforce transparency. There should be stiff penalties for withholding or using non-public information as in, in any transaction involving the public. We already do a pretty good job of that, but we could focus more on it. We should also have laws that enforce digital executable contracts, especially across jurisdictions. We must push the legal profession to replace most contracts with code. This is where we need a strong legal framework that spans states and countries. The whole concept of regulating banking is to build brands and institutions that people trust. Last year, the worldwide economy was $85 trillion. Of that $85 trillion, the banking industry collected over $1.4 trillion in fees, mostly because consumers have no other choice. In the last 10 years, banks have paid over $340 billion in fines for breaking the law. That's business as usual. Everyone is used to it. We should live in a world of zero trust, where we don't have to trust humans in the chain, where the FBI can't get our data if they wanted it, where we can rely on decentralized software and strong cryptography to manage our data. An example is custodians. You can pay a custodian like Morgan Stanley to hold your assets, or you could just set up a multi-sig. A multi-sig requires the signatures of several other people to release an asset. So you could choose four other people you trust personally, and then any three out of those five can retrieve or release the assets. This prevents you from losing money and helps your family when you die. Multi-sig wallets are very safe and effective ways of storing digital assets, and they don't cost anything. But if custodians are required, then our assets are at the mercy of a company's IT people and their hiring and business practices and their fees. If custodians aren't required, then they can explain how much value they add and customers can decide. In the US, businesses still send over 10 billion paper checks a year. Consumers still write and mail about 7 billion paper checks each year. Turkey has a much better banking infrastructure than the United States does, and it's easier to use by far. Since money is data, we need better standards, better infrastructure, better cooperation, and better system for moving money around the world. Shared ledgers will be a big part of that, and regulators and central banks should encourage them. We are many years away from data interoperability that will free cons consumers to use any system they like and be in control of their finances. Anything less is business as usual. 
Going digital has almost nothing to do with technology and everything to do with people. The problem really comes down to governance. We're spending hundreds of billions of dollars to comply with old laws that never really worked and prevent innovation. If you want to improve the world of finance, don't digitize the one we have now. Reboot it instead. If you want to connect me, want me to help make your project or institution more aware of the big picture, or hire me to say heretical things at your next online event, just shoot this with your LinkedIn app or send me an email. Thank you.